All right, so thank you to all our presenters. Um, we come now to our council-initiated discussion, and this is your opportunity to bring up whatever topics you think we should know about, to let us know things you would like to hear about in the future. We had some outside speakers today, people that, that you'd like to hear from. We'll try to get them here. Um, any, anything you want us to know or tell you more about? While you're thinking of that, I will tell you that um, the NIH director, was, we had scheduled to come today um, and unfortunately developed, a couple weeks ago, developed a conflict. So um, assuming she's still the NIH director in February, I mean, I, I mean, I think she desperately, I mean, definitely wants to come here. And so uh, we, will, we will plan for that, um, even though we'll be virtual. So, but that's fine. Um, so, so, but it is helpful to know who you want to hear from. I, we, we got Lyric to come today as, a, as a, someone who we could get on short notice. And I think about other people like that, but I would take your suggestions as well. Or, or topics that you'd like us to cover. Nancy? The presentation that was given the last, at the last meeting on um, you know, all the aspects of who's being funded, the, yeah, events put together. The, it, that was a really good presentation. And there were a lot of questions afterwards um, that suggested some follow-up. I'm just curious about the ongoing nature of, of collecting those kinds of data. So we're continuing to collect that data to be able to report out. You know, one of the questions is, when do you come back? with yeah, more yeah. information or, or additional trends. Or there may be other topic areas that yeah. you want similar type of data uh, presented that we did not present. So. It was a great report, though. It was really helpful. I do think thinking about how, how frequently we might yeah come back and do the same analysis as well as what other topics we might do. Like, is it every three years? Is it every two years? Yeah. Yeah. What, what is the right cadence for well, that? I, I just wondered whether a report like this, so they have those newsletters that come out from NIH. And like one of the last ones had PhD, MD, and joint degrees, and you know, showing the success rates for grants in, in those various categories. Did, was this report shared more broadly in NIH? The, the report that we presented to you was just for the Institute and for Council. Um, but one of the things that we might want to do is, is to invite someone from the Office of Extramural Research who's been involved um, with some of the NIH-wide data, uh, looking at some of those topic areas. Yeah. So that, that's another area that we could identify a speaker uh, that could come um, that would you know, present information beyond uh, the work okay. at NHGRI. Iftikhar, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, I've been more and more thinking about um, you know, the issues with diversity and equity in this country as it relates to the issue globally. And um, I know that Terry and the Genomic Medicine Working Group have done wonderful work in getting some of these steps going on with the 100K uh, consortia and so forth. But it'd be really nice to maybe, I don't know, get the WHO Science Council head uh, at one of these meetings. What can the NHGRI do to continue, for example, what it started with the H3 Africa? Now that that's sunset, I know that that's uh, right now under a lot of great interest. And I know Francis, for example, has try to encourage uh, public-private partnerships. But I think that's such a critical area for us um, as an institute to not let go of uh, this, you know, the importance of that and do as much as we can to further you know, collaborations on a, that level. So it's a great suggestion. And I think we, we will talk about it and figure out the best time, whether February is right or a little bit later. This is as, of course, I think many people know how Jen was such a huge architect of H3 Africa, and even in her new role, she gets to continue to help me and help the Institute on, 
you know, just sort of think about these big picture strategic things. You are absolutely, including uh, helping me convene meetings that includes Francis in a, in a post-director uh, role, uh, leadership role, and he is doing a bunch of things that probably aren't quite ready for public presentation, but could be at some point. I would also say the other development um, is, uh, is, although I think she's in her first three months, probably or four months, we have a new head of Fogarty International Center. And, and I think she would be delighted to come, and I, we should just think about whether February is too soon, maybe May yeah, is appropriate, we thought, we because she's just trying to get her feet on the ground. She's very interested in this. Um, so yeah, I mean, we are, um, and you know, there's always uh, uh, you know, interest. We, we're not gonna do it this round, but can, you know, are there other common fund initiatives, Carolyn, that we might be sending <laughs> towards the common fund, Carolyn? Uh, sorry, Case. Uh, no, I'm not supposed to lobby the common fund, Carolyn, but um, so, no, I mean, that's continually discussed about, you know, whether, I mean, it can't be an H, it can't just be more of a traffic, it has to be something different, but so we, I, I will just tell you, there's a lot of interest within the Institute, including it over in the intramural side, with some significant interest, not only by our scientific director, but some investigators. So I think it's a great suggestion, and it's something we are working on, and it's, we are in a tough period here for a variety of reasons, but we're, we're not going to give up. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be something that's going to come out of it. So when we think there's a, a nascent enough idea and the right people will bring sign to this council, that's a great suggestion. Yeah, Kelly? So after the human genome was sequenced and um, you know variants in the genome were identified and GWAS was initiated, NHGRI was really kind of leading many of the institutes at the NIH. You know, NHLBI. I mean, everybody wanted to get a part of what the NHGRI was doing, and I don't have a good feeling for. How are the how is the NHGRI now leading or interacting with the other institutes in the genetic space? Or <laughs> I, I'm looking at which of my three division directors going to run into a mic. Oh, they don't need to run into a microphone because they have microphones in front of them. Yeah, you know, here's what I I'll start the bidding, but I really hope some folks help me here. Um, the, the the truth is. They, they, they don't need us for a lot of stuff because I think we were successful at showing the way in a lot of regards of what they needed to do. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they did it exactly the way we thought they should have done it or that has led to as many good outcomes. Well, there's plenty of great examples where I think that is. I mean, genetics is broadly distributed across the NIH. It always has been and it always will be. Genetics, per se, and for a long time, genomics was our, our domain, but we, I think, to our success and our credit has have gotten it largely disseminated across. So I think when, it, when it's about um, a specific disease area, we always push it away. When it's about thinking more broadly about architecture of disease and, you know, non-codings and, you know, there's a lot of things that are more you know, high level, you know, cross cutting principle building, then we tend to take it on. Um, and, um, or, and especially in the rare disease space where it doesn't always fit nicely into one of the institutes. So I, I think there is distributed genetics programmatic leadership across NIH, and I think we lean heavily into the genomic side of it. But I'm, I'm sure every one of us is going to give a slightly different answer, I suspect. But Carolyn, you're going to be the first one. Sure. Um, I mean, I think that we do still at the at different levels and certainly at the program director um, level have a lot of connections with the other institutes. Some of this is still people that we, we built those connections with with some of these earlier programs you're talking about and some of them are happening with, you know, new staff or new people coming on where we have both more informal groups, like Adam Felsenfeld continues to lead a group with a lot of the people who are involved in large-scale sequencing across the institutes and having conversations there. Valentina and her group has brought together um, ways to bring the different cloud 
um, d genomic data sharing platforms together. So we do still really work quite a bit with our colleagues. Sometimes that results in co-funding or co-sponsoring of initiatives and activities. Sometimes that's just information sharing or being on, you know, joining each other's working groups or meetings or other activities. So I think we're still, we still have a role, but as Eric's talked about and as was part of our last strategic vision, genomics is now everywhere. And so we try to identify our forefront areas and recognize a lot of the other activities happening at the other institutes, but still trying to play a role as a convener and, and sort of subject matter expert experts when that's called upon. Uh, the other comment, before then I'll let Terry and I come, anyway, I'm just, you know, I'm really starting to think <coughs> it's, it's a great question. You know, the other thing I think that's happened, to be honest with you, I, is that, you know, Francis, when he was NIH director, appointed 23 institute directors. I was his first, but then there were 22 others that followed. Um, that's right, maybe it's 24, I mean, I, whatever, something like that. There's only three more senior than me. A lot of them, guess what, are, knew a lot of genetics. You know, a Diana Bianchi, I mean, even a Gary Gibbons, even a, you know, you, a, a Rick Wojcik. Um, I'm sure there's others I could quickly think of. So there's, there, you know, it, what it did was give a lot of expertise, you know, at, so, and, and um, I think a lot of, the, I mean, I'm gonna state the obvious, a lot of what institutes do tend to be heavily guided by the institute director. For example, and no disrespect, Tony Fauci is wonderful, one of my great friends, I completely think he's a legend. He was actually never particularly strongly interested, you know, about the, the genetics of the host. Um, um, and, but Jeannie Marazzo, within hours of showing up at NIH, was so interested in interacting with me, interacting with Terry, interacting with our staff. Now we're doing a workshop with them, which Terry thought would never happen, that we would do a workshop um, with NIAID, but it's happening. In, it's, in fact, it's the first workshop I think she's doing, is, and we're doing jointly. So, you know, it is personal. So there was an institute that had very little interest in that for a long time, and now all of a sudden is, is jumping with two feet in to do something with us. So I, I think it's just idiosyncratic across the, diff, the different institutes. Terry, what were you going to add? Well, I was, I was going to mention that one and, and also sort of liken it to the um, TCGA program, which now I can't remember, the Cancer Genome Atlas, there you go. which my colleague w led for us, uh, which was an area that, that basically NCI didn't, with all due respect to them, <laughs> recognize was such a, an opportunity area for them. And, and so, so what we will continue to try to do is reach out to our partners. Um, we did this with NICHD, with newborn sequencing, uh, another area that, that you know, we kind of helped them along. They helped us with the, with the subject matter um, uh, expertise. And so, so we're looking forward to this host genomics thing. We'll see where it goes. And, and we think there are other opportunities like that as well. And you know, it's interesting, uh, Terry, I forgot what year we did. If, if we pick a topic that is cross-cutting, we, we can barely keep people away. Like when you did the most recent second workshop, I think, on missing heritability. Maybe it's been a lot of years, but it seemed like, you know, you throw up something, oh, we're going to have a workshop on missing heritability. Everybody's interested in that because it's an unsolved problem at every institute. So I think it depends. Genetics, writ large, lots going on every place. You name a slice of that that's of broad interest, especially the hard problems, and then lots of people want to join us, or at least at the workshop level. Well, I got to say, I mean, to me, it feels like NHGRI, I mean, to Eric's credit, he got out in front of the translation, not this strategic plan, but the one before, yeah. Yeah. and took a lot of flack for, for being way out ahead of the basic science. And people were like, no, we're not ready. We're not ready for translation. By the time that strategic plan was over, like we were so far into translation. And it is appropriate that NHGRI, through Emerge, is driving you know, polygenic score kinds of translation research, right? It's, this is, how do we do this? And how, how do we make robust machines for variant annotation that will drive translation? So I, I see, it's weird, but it's true. NHGRI drives that much more than the disease institutes do because they, because it feels 
you know, too too far out in front for them to and, do. And it. you just implied it, and Terry could say more, and Aaron's not here. I mean, ClinGen is a great example. Oh, a, I mean, a fabulous example. I mean, ClinGen, what yeah. Aaron has, has leveraged and her ClinGen team, I mean, Lots of institutes are, are are jumping in with money, with people, with and it's, it's so it's it's just been fantastic. No, I to agree, watch. and I think also even genome wide association studies. So if you go way way back, they didn't they didn't know that genome wide association was a thing, and and really you know we had three major programs in that, and then suddenly we said you know we don't need to stimulate this anymore because they've picked it up. I guess my, my point was kind of, in the early days, it seemed like the NHGRI was leading all of this and everybody was knowing it. And now, I mean, I think you have a, these, these concept clearance presentations were fabulous. But I, I still think like rare disease, I know NEI has a lot of rare diseases that have not been solved, right? And so I'm, I'm wondering if the NHGRI can still invigorate this and, and figure out how to get the other institutes to bring their domain knowledge to so, help solve some of these so problems. I mean, like Terry yeah, just said about the NCI, yeah. right? I mean, the NHGRI couldn't have done that without the NCI because you needed that domain knowledge. And so would it, would it actually even be more impactful to try to engage some of the others? Well, I mean, I don't know, Lisa, if you want to come to a microphone and say anything. I mean, I, I mean Greg, the, the rare disease space, I've always thought we should be doing with other institutes. We did originally, I yeah. think Gregor less so. I think it's frustrating yeah. that more don't, but it's not without trying, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, the CMG actually did have co-funding from NEI and NHLBI, but neither of them participated going forward. And you're right, like all of the ICs have rare diseases, right? Um, so yeah, I agree. I would say another place where we're leading, and I don't know if Valentina and Larry want to talk about this, but it's policy. And, well, I was going to bring up, the, there's an area where we're still leading where I wish other people would do more, and that's in the, the LC area in that we still, and the LC program supports grants from, that could easily be supported by some of the disease-specific entities who don't have the wherewithal or the resolve to fund LC research. Uh, so I, I think if, what's our, our number, 90% of the genomics in, in NIH is now not being done here. I'd say probably the amount for LC is probably closer to half of it still is being done here. Yeah. And, um, Data science, genomic data science. I mean, uh, the, the genomic analysis tools, resources. We we are literally supporting resources that are used broadly across the NIH. Um, yeah, you know, launching new platforms for data sharing and data analysis that can be used broadly uh, by various investigators or different type of institutions. Uh, we 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 are really uh, leading. Uh, all the research efforts in genomic data science that are being broadly adopted uh, by the rest of the, the institutes. Other thoughts or other people you want to hear from at future council meetings? Topics? 